In the last video, we talked about helium, where it comes from on the Earth, and where it's going to go to. In particular, uh, where the helium inside of party balloons goes to. And some of its uses we have in science. But there's something else helium can do, which is really amazing. And it happens when you cool helium down to a super cold temperature. When you cool helium down to about 2 degrees Kelvin, that's 2 degrees above absolute zero, it displays a property known as superfluidity. That means the helium becomes a superfluid, which has zero viscosity. Now in terms of liquid, viscosity is like friction. So a superfluid virtually has no friction acting on it, and it can flow around as it pleases. In the last video, I also mentioned that this balloon is starting to lose some of its internal helium. Already it's starting to bleed off into the atmosphere. But if this balloon was filled with a superfluid helium, it would have no hope of holding on to helium for very long at all. And that's because superfluid helium, with its zero viscosity, is able to find very small gaps in materials and pour straight through them. So in this video here, you can see that the superfluid helium is starting to leak out of this beaker. It's finding the very small pores in the beaker and dripping out of it. No other liquid can do that because viscosity gets in the way, friction between the molecules. Another cool thing you can do with superfluid helium is create um, an infinite fountain. Because there's no friction inside of the superfluid, you can keep circulating a fountain around forever, um, and it won't slow down as long as it's kept below uh, 2 degrees Kelvin. You might be thinking there's an infinite energy machine in there somehow, but the problem is keeping it below that 2 degrees Kelvin. It takes a lot more energy to keep it below that temperature than what you could ever hope to try and extract from that um, never-ending fountain. Another cool thing that helium can do is climb out of containers. So in the case where you don't have a very porous beaker that it can drip through the bottom of, um, depending on the angle of a slope, superfluid helium can actually climb out of it um, using a property known as a Rollins film. Now a Rollins film is only about 30 nanometers thick, so that's incredibly tiny. But it allows superfluid helium to form a surface which extends up a glass wall and down the other side. So in this video here, you can see there's liquid helium dripping off the bottom of this glass holder. Superfluidity isn't necessarily restricted to helium. There's also some areas of um, theoretical physics which employ superfluidity um, to try and explain some very complicated things. One thing, for example, is in astrophysics, we have these objects known as neutron stars, which are incredibly dense pieces of matter, which are the cause of exploded old stars. And the very interesting thing with these neutron stars is they're the most dense form of matter uh, that we think can happen in the universe. And they produce very strong magnetic fields and um, radio waves. Now, to try and understand how these radio waves are produced, some theorists have put forward the idea that a layer of the neutron star is comprised of a superfluid which flows around the neutron star generating a very strong magnetic field. We don't yet have any evidence to support this idea, but it's certainly a cool application of how superfluids might um, actually find a use in nature inside of these very dense um, stellar remnants. Another area of theoretical physics where superfluids are playing a part is in uh, quantum mechanics, particularly quantum field theory and the applications of uniting gravity with quantum mechanics. One such idea is something called superfluid vacuum theory, which puts forward the idea that the vacuum, which permeates all of space, is actually a superfluid. It has no viscosity. But again, of course, we have no way of testing this theory at the moment. If it could, um, provide a way to explain how gravity links into quantum mechanics. It'll certainly be a very interesting way to view the universe. So there's lots of very interesting things that happen with superfluids. Um, and there's lots of other experiments in quantum mechanics that deal with Bose-Einstein condensates, which can sometimes behave as superfluids. So it's an incredibly interesting property, which, um, when it was discovered, in the early days of quantum mechanics, was an extreme puzzle 
um, to physicists. How could um, liquid behave with zero viscosity? So if you're ever feeling sad that uh, your party balloon that you wanted to keep is deflating like this one, um, don't feel too bad, because if it was filled with liquid helium, it would probably only last a few hours to a couple of days. So at least this gas helium lasts a bit longer than that. Anyway, that's another cool thing which helium can do, apart from float up into the sky. Um, if you like this video, please do leave a like. And if you have suggestions for future videos, please do suggest them in the comments below. But until next time, thanks for watching.